Today is a bad day for tyranny and corruption. They're pathetic fuckers that want to keep killing our children. He does not give a fuck about these kids' lives. Yeah. I'd love to meet that. Hey, if you're out there, fuck you. Every march, every meeting, every moment. Oh, for that assault weapons ban. Oh, for that assault weapons ban. That assault weapons ban. So we need to protect, we need to fight the, the problem from the core, which is guns. For the first time, the corrupt aren't controlling our story. They want to be back on top unquestioned in their corruption. It is our job to make sure that we call them up and force them out of the shadows of corruption and into the light of justice. We are. The corrupt aren't manipulating the facts. We know the truth. Shooting after shooting, the American people now see one thing they all have in common, the weapons. Well, here in Washington, we are demanding an assault weapons ban. The people demand a law banning the sale of assault weapons. Stand for us or beware, the voters are coming. We are demanding the pre prohibition of sales of high capacity ma magazines. When they give us that inch, that bump stock ban, we will take a mile. We will take a mile. We are not here for breadcrumbs, we are here for real change. Uh, and pointed that his administration banned bump stocks. They enacted the Stop School Violence Act, which authorized grants to increase school safety and uh, some actions to improve background check records. Do all of you consider that progress? You know, the Stop School Violence Act doesn't even mention the word gun once. Obviously, school safety is important, but it doesn't just happen in schools, and people need to understand that. It's a public safety issue, not a school safety issue. So we need to protect, we need to fight the, the problem from the core, which is guns. That bill, the, the, the silent rhetoric behind it is that since the government will never agree on anything, let's pass something very easy and simple that everyone can get behind. But that's because it doesn't do anything. This, that bill does nothing to keep the students or people outside of schools, outside of the line of fire. And we're fighting for that people bill, everywhere. That bill, you're talking about fix nicks? You're talking yes. about no, stop school violence. Stop, stop school violence. Well, you're talking about fix nicks. You're talking about no, stop, school 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 stop school violence. Stop school violence. This isn't just in schools. We met with people from communities who have to, who are frightened to leave their houses mm -hmm. because and who have woken up to the sound of gunshots very frequently. This is everywhere. This is an epidemic, and the Stop School Violence Act does almost nothing to stop it. It doesn't say the word gun once, it doesn't say the words background checks once, mm -hmm. and 97% of the country in a poll showed that they support universal background checks. And 97% of the country in a poll showed that they support universal background checks. Anyone who doesn't, I, I don't understand that. Al Gore was defeated. A defeat President Clinton sorely conceded was because of you, the members of the NRA. You've got to give it to them. They've done a good job. They, they probably had more to do with anyone else than the fact we didn't win the House this time. And they hurt Al Gore. The NRA beat him in Arkansas. The NRA... And Ralph Nader... Right, stand right behind the Supreme Court and their ability to claim that they put George Bush in the White House. And because 20 members of Congress were ousted, and because President Clinton's anti-gun agenda had been destroyed, and Al Gore had been defeated, the politics of Washington, D.C. have been turned upside down. Politicians and the media were no longer able, and frankly, many of them were no longer willing to stand behind the lie. And when CNN tried, it got slammed down hard by the NRA's Wayne LaPierre. Wow. CNN and, uh, staged Sheriff a Ken fake Kenny demonstration. With Broward County, Florida Sheriff Ken Jenny using an AK-47 machine gun claiming it was on the list of banned semi-autos. That's right, it's an old Chinese AK-47 that has been banned. And that is one of the banned that's, weapons, that's, the 19 currently banned weapons. Weapons. Now this is automatic. Wow. 
not true. Machine guns have effectively been banned by the National Firearms Act of 1934. But this demonstration wasn't about facts. It was about convincing viewers to keep the 1994 ban on the books. A pretty powerful demonstration of the firepower of these weapons. No doubt it puts it in perspective. Our John Zarella, great report. But CNN didn't get away with it. Within hours, the NRA's Wayne LaPierre exposed CNN's lies for what they were. Your reporter faked that story yesterday. It deliberately misread right, the gonna, viewer. There's no way. There's no way it could be true. And I we're, challenge we're, CNN to defend it. Well, we're not going to continue this interview because our our. It's not just CNN. It's Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, CNN, who? ABC, yeah, but who, NBC. Who are the sources? Carl. Who are the sources? Oh, because they're hiding behind this in anonymity. Oh, Pop, and that's what we're Pop, please, do not even start with me that you're just going to attack sources. Yeah. Do not attack the stellar I'm, reporters of CNN okay. who okay. have their sources it's and the would protect their sources. stellar reporters of CNN. Fake news is when you put out a story to intentionally deceive someone and you know that it is wrong. I don't know of anyone who has put out a story in the, the mainstream media that I can think of right now to, that, to intentionally deceive anyone. Uh, CNN's Don Lemon is joining us now live from Ferguson. What's the mood like, Ferguson? What's the mood like there, Don? Okay. What's the mood like there, Don? Okay. Uh, I think we're about to be arrested because we're standing on the sidewalk and you said you want to... Move out of the way, sir. Move. But this here is the foundation for this. You can't separate them. I, I don't know what them black robe perverts don't understand down there. I'm, uh, I'm not going to resist the police officer, so I'm being pushed back by the police officer. So you can see this is exactly what the citizens have been dealing with. What the citizens have been dealing with. What the citizens have been dealing with. Been dealing with. So, we're going to anyway. Now you see why people are so upset here. Well, we're not going to continue this interview because our, our reporter did not fake. Because you don't well, not want the truth. Right. The truth matters. What? You misled the viewer. What CNN was faced with a media nightmare. Either stand behind the story and perpetuate the lie or come clean. And that's exactly what Wayne LaPierre forced them to do. Another sea change moment with the media because that's when the attempt to show the semi-automatic firearm as a fully automatic spray firing machine gun stopped. Here's the correction CNN aired three days later. On this program on Thursday of last week, we aired a live demonstration CNN set up with law enforcement officials of a banned semi-automatic rifle and its legal counterpart. We reviewed that demonstration and one on another CNN program and decided that a more detailed report would better explain this complex issue. Here's CNN's John Zarella. This is a semi-automatic firearm. It instantly self-loads and fires one bullet for each trigger pull. What we're talking about is not just 19 different kinds of guns. This is the first step of removing guns from freedom-loving individuals in this country. In fact, Senator Dianne Feinstein admitted that in an interview with 60 Minutes. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, for an outright ban, picking up every one of them. M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. Your difference so if you could just add just that to this bill, that would be great, Diane. If you could add what you have also, and I think you can, into For an outright ban, I would have done it. If you could add what you have also, and I think you can, into the bill, yeah. So Joe, are you ready? Can you do that? Joe, can you do that, Pat? Can you add some of the things? You're not going to agree with me. Yeah, if you help. Well, no, I'll help, but can you add what Amy and what Diane have? Can we add them in? And I know you can add what John yeah, I have another domestic violence. We cannot move on. If we move on, the NRA and those against us will win. If teachers start packing heat, are they going to arm our pastors, ministers, and rabbis? Are they going to arm the guys scanning tickets at the movie theater? 
Are they gonna arm the person wearing the Mickey Mouse costume at Disney? This is what the National Rifle Association wants. This here, a dollar and five cents. When you take 3,140,167, the number of students enrolled in Florida schools, and divide it by 3,303,355, the amount of money Marco Rubio has received from the National Rifle Association. It comes out to a dollar and five cents. Is that all we're worth to these politicians? A dollar and five cents? It's gonna take some will. So let me ask, is there a will to keep weapons of war off our streets? Is there a will to break the stranglehold of the NRA? Is there a will to bring morality to this country's politics? Then stand up. Speak up, register to vote. If we sustain our efforts, if we keep our heads unbowed, who can stop us? If we march today, canvas tomorrow, and vote 227 days from now, we will make this a turning point for our country. And we, the new diverse, inclusive, and compassionate base of America, will lead this country once again down the path of righteousness. Thank you. Your old ass parents, like, I don't know how to send an iMessage, and you're just like, give me the fucking phone. And you take it, and you're like, okay, let me handle it. And you get it done in one second. Sadly, that's what we have to do with our government because our parents don't know how to use a fucking democracy, so we have to. And guard. Point, with Rick Scott, it's like, when I get elected to Senate, we're not gonna <laughs> let that fucking happen, and you guys better not either. Oh, it's absolutely opportunistic. opportunistic. He does not give a fuck about these kids' lives at all. It's also been great advertising for me um, in terms of acting, because right. I don't give a shit what people say about me, but they've quadrupled my Twitter following and they've done a great job of that. Oh, it's, it's absolutely opportunistic. opportunistic. He does not give a fuck about these kids' lives. If you listen real close, you can hear the people in power shaking. Because this, this is not cutting it. And I saved Nicholas for the end because today is Nicholas's birthday. Nicholas, we are all here for you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Politicians say that your voice doesn't matter because the NRA owns them. We say no more. My name is Trevon Bosley, and I'm here with the brave youth leaders of St. Sabina. And I'm here to speak on behalf of Chicago's youth who are surrounded and affected by gun violence every day. I must add, though, Chicago's violence epidemic didn't start overnight. It was caused by many problems that we are still not dealing with to this day. When you have a city that feels it's more important to help pay for a college and sports complex rather than fund uh, schools and impoverished communities, you have gun violence. When you have a city, we have a city that feels we need more divvy bikes in downtown Chicago for tourists rather than more funding for workforce programs to get guys off the streets real jobs, you have gun violence. 
When you have an Illinois state governor, Bruce Rauner, who feels that funding anti-violence programs is, I quote, non-essential spending, you have gun violence. When you have elected officials who feel that getting a few extra dollars from the NRA is more important than their actual constituents, you have gun violence. The situation in Chicago, man. I'm from Chicago. Born and raised there. I ran those streets in Chicago and changed my life. But I want to kind of make people aware of some things that you don't know. Because you've never really been out there, then you wouldn't know it. And it's going to be hard to believe. But myself, for a fact, and several others that I ran with know this to be the truth. Um, growing up in Chicago in the early 90s, the same situation was happening. I've been in Chicago where a person came into my house and knocked on the door to come and get me early in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, and said, uh, come with me, man, it's, it's a crate of guns in the alley. And I got up and ran out there, and sure enough, there was a crate of guns. And during that time when we in it, you know, I'm thinking about it. Where did the guns just come from? You know, you, you never think about that type of stuff. Like, where did the guns come from and why are they here? But now that I'm older, I can kind of tell you that it's a diabolical plot. Nothing is stopped. The, gun, the guns are still there. The guns are still being placed in these different strategic communities. It's a plan. It's not out in Bridgeview. It's not out in, you know, uh, West Mountain. You know, they, they're putting it in the hundreds for sure. Yeah, they're putting it on 55th. They're putting it in Inglewood, you know, 6.30 in the morning while older people that's at work, that work, you know, you sleep. You're not outside. So, you know, you got the street walkers and the people that's out, you know, they hustling and they out all types of day. And yeah, they're the ones that's going to run across them. And who would go and tell the police? I never went and went to go tell the police when we found some guns. Okay, the police are locking people up constantly in Chicago every single day. They're taking guns off the street every single day, every day. So how is it that all of these guns just keep appearing? Where are all the guns coming from? Nobody's going to the gun store buying these guns. They got guns that they can't control. They shooting these guns, letting off, man, a hundred shots, man, in, in, in 30 seconds. These guns are not being bought. They don't have no gun license to buy these guns. So where are they getting the guns from? That's the question. I'm telling you right now. They've been dropping the guns off in crates for years. They've been doing it. I've seen it twice in my lifetime. I've seen it in 1990, and then I've seen it again in 1999. I've seen it with my own eyes. You can believe it or not, but that's the honest to God truth. When you have an Illinois state governor, Bruce Rauner, who feels that funding anti-violence programs is, I quote, non-essential spending, you have gun violence. When you have elected officials who feel that getting a few extra dollars from the NRA is more important than their actual constituents, you have gun violence. And when you have a president that would rather constantly talk about and belittle Chicago's violence than rather than send funds and resources, you have gun violence. I lost more than my brother that day. I lost my hero. I also lost my mother, my sister, and myself to that trauma and that anxiety. If the bullet did not kill me, that anxiety and that trauma will. I carry that trauma everywhere I go. I carry it with me in schools, in class, walking home and visiting loved ones. And I am not alone in this experience. For decades, my community of South Los Angeles has become accustomed to this violence. It is normal to see candles. It is normal to see posters. It is normal to see balloons. It is normal to see flowers honoring the lives of black and brown youth that have lost their lives to a bullet.
these guns are not being bought. They don't have no gun license to buy these guns. Well, here in Washington, we are demanding an assault weapons ban. We are demanding the pre prohibition of sales of high capacity ma magazines. And we are demanding universal background checks. So how is it that all of these guns just keep appearing? Where are all the guns coming from? Nobody's going to the gun store buying these guns. The young survivors were at the center of much of the attention, but there were plenty of celebrities on hand at the marches as well, lending their names, voices, and checkbooks to the cause. Stars from Ariana Grande to George Clooney to Paul McCartney getting involved. Come together, we're our children. Star power boosting the March for Our Lives. MSD strong! From singers like Demi, Ariana, right. and Miley. I just find myself lucky to be in the presence of all of you wonderful people fighting for what is right. To Broadway actors Lin-Manuel Miranda and Ben Platt. Oh, raise a glass to all of us. Tomorrow there'll be more of us. Celebrities in the entertainment and music industry lending a hand and the coast-to-coast -coast call for gun reform. In D.C., spotted standing with hundreds of thousands of marchers, George Clooney and his wife, humanitarian lawyer Amal Clooney, the couple donating a half a million dollars to the cause. George Clooney and his wife, humanitarian lawyer Amal Clooney, the couple donating a half a million dollars to the cause. And in New York, Paul McCartney honoring John Lennon. One of my best friends was killed in gun violence right around here. The march is not the climax of this movement, it is the beginning. It is the springboard off of which my generation and all who stand with us will jump into a safer future. Today, is a bad day for tyranny and corruption. And if you think today is good, just wait for tomorrow. I used to know what tomorrow looked like before the world split in two. Everything changed then. We are human beings. Each and every one of us. This must not go on. This injustice must end. An increase in the number of terrorist attacks highlights the danger posed by augmented citizens. Highlights the danger posed by augmented citizens. I once thought I could save the world. Now look at it. Help me! We will not sit idly by and allow our rights to be eroded out of fear and ignorance any longer. We will not be herded into ghettos and treated as outcasts. We will stop at nothing! The world is different now. The old rules no longer apply. So much pain. So many lies. Their darkness must end. Again, these are common sense bills. No one is taking away anyone's constitutional right to own a firearm. No one is taking away anyone's constitutional right to own a firearm. And if those elected to represent us won't do what's right to keep us safe, then we're gonna be too loud for them to ignore. Can you raise your hand if you're gonna be voting in November? Are you eligible to vote? Mm -hmm. My birthday's in October, so I, I hit the mark. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not a Russian computer, so I can't vote in the next election, but for the one <laughs> vote I can't cast, we'll have thousands for us.